Hi, Dan Struble here at the Technical Application Center here in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. We're going to talk to you today about tool offsets. So we're going to talk about the two different types of tool offsets and how to calibrate and set a fixed point so you can measure all your tools off that and have repeatability. So let's get into it. So we have two different types and I've created this document and I'll put it in the link below. Basically, the two different types is positive tool length offset and negative tool length offset. So negative tool length offset, what you'll find is you're going to find a very large number in the tool offset page. That's going to get you kind of setting a point and we come down and touch it and there's going to be that large number from wherever zero is on the machine down below. Then we're going to get into positive tool offset. So then this doc can kind of spells out each kind of way of doing it and how you utilize it. So if we look at this, we got some pictures here, we got a tool, and if we look at the tip of the tool touching down to your fixture or the jaw of your vise, right, there's that large number, and that is going to put into your tool offset. Now, the con to this is the fact is now everything has to be touched off of that jaw. So if I remove this tool and put it in another machine, I'm going to have to touch that tool off again. So there's kind of a drawback to using negative tool offset. When we look at positive tool offset, basically positive tool offset is now we find where the gauge of that machine is or the gauge of, of, of that tool, machine tool or the surface of the spindle. And we touch it off to a fixed point or our jaw, right? And then we bring and put our tool in there. And what's nice is once we do that and we find gauge, that's the gauge of that tool. So this is going to be five inches and 39 in this machine, in this track, and then into the machine next to it. And really there's a lot of pros when you start to do it this way. And if you haven't done it this way and haven't thought about doing it, I suggest looking into it because it's nice because when you start to go into five axis this is the route that you want to do for your tool offset because when we talk about five axis this is you really want to know where that tip of that tool is and the math gets a little bit easier for the control when you use positive tool length offset so there's a couple of different things that you can do to to, to do this when you're using cat 40 it's pretty beneficial to use two different things probably use a, a calibration tool or a test bar and the reason being is because they're actually ground to a known gauge and a known height. And then that really makes them easy to calibrate your fixed point or your location of where you're going to pick up all your tools at on this machine. So we're going to show you that. So here, as you can see, we have a calibration tool on a test bar. It has a known length and a known diameter, so we can do radio and length, too, as well, if we really wanted to check that out. These are the tools that would be nice to have, too, if you don't have one of these in your shop, to calibrate your tool probe or your tool laser. These are really, really beneficial. I would suggest having these in there. But basically, if we look at this up close, it's basically a tool. It has some ground information on there of the known gauge to here. And you can use a couple different things to start to do this. One of the things you can use is just a simple one, two, three block or a gauge block. And you can set this to the top of this and now touch all your tools off. And then basically you come in and touch all your tools off to this top of this one, two, three block. The next is my, one of my favorites is basically a digital one where you actually have a, a movable kind of plunger and once you come down to zero then you know it is and the nice thing about that is you can kind of see that through the window you don't have to be in there in the machine with a one two three block we basically just hand wheel down until we see it light up at zero and then now you set your tool length another one is a, a plunger with a light kind of thing uh once it lights up right you can see it change state the one thing i like about this is another one where you can come down and just kind of hand wheel until you see it lights up there is a little bit of drawback with that one because it has to have metal on metal. As you can see, I have to touch metal on metal. As soon as I come off this, uh, it's not conducting. Uh, 
so we won't be able to utilize it on things that aren't metal. So why does it have anything? Maybe you use ceramic tools or maybe you're using PCD coating where it doesn't, it's not conductive or something like that where it's not going to light up. So you might get some false reads on that. I really like the one with the, the readout as well as the light up too as well. That's really what I would do. And basically what we're doing here is two different things. We're basically just setting a zero and everything above that is plus. So how does it work on there? So you can utilize this. If we go back to the, the document here, how do we touch off a fixed point and how do we calibrate it? So I go through in this document, kind of lay out two different ways. How do you do it negative? How I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show how you do it positive. But basically, if we look at this, right, we look at if I take my plunger style one and I put it in the machine and I take my calibration tool, as you can see, I put in there the same dimensions that's on my tool itself and I put it in the spindle. Right? Now just hand wheel down now. So I get zero, and now I go to my measure tool page, and I'm going to calibrate fixed point. Now, I just leave this at zero, and I just basically hit calibrate. Now, it sets that position now. So now, when I go to measure any tool, like if I just bring this up now in my Z, I bring it up. say 23 microns, right? And now I go to measure, measure length and I basically say set length, right? It will change to my length here on that page, right? So that is how you would calibrate for using one of these plunger style types of tools, right? It really makes life really nice and easy, right? So this is a good tool to kind of use to set your, your tool length. If you want to do it negatively, you just have to give the distance from the table to there. And I spell that out in the document. But as we go through this again, so kind of spells out exactly how to do it. But one thing I wanted to kind of touch about is some different ways of utilizing it. Again, I said the gauge block, a known value, or a plunger style kind of with a dial. I like those a lot because then you can have the door closed. When you start to think about positive tool length offset, one of the things you can start to come into play is a presetter. And there's a lot of benefits when you think about positive tool length is I can start to stage tools, right? I can, I can have a tray next to a machine like this and I can start to put all my tools for that next job in all the lengths so that once I'm done, I can now put that in and start running. Utilizing a presetter that you can stage and measure everything offline and then put it in the machine when you're ready to switch over that job. Then there's some really nice things that if you haven't seen before or utilize it, you have some uh, ways of doing it inside the machine, right? So basically, <clears throat> If you use a tool laser or tool probe, you can totally utilize those two as well. I just put that in the document as well. So those are ways of doing it automatically where you actually, the tool goes over and goes through the laser and breaks it, measures it, or the tool goes over to the plunger and breaks it and measures it. Those are the kind of things that are inside the machine. Those are calibrated and they're used as tool probes and they give you your tool length offset. Usually in those types are going to be positive tool length offsets. So that's really why I wanted to kind of spell it out in this video. If you really like this video, please like and subscribe to this video. Again, don't forget to download this document when you are done watching this video. Again, like and subscribe. 
I really appreciate you coming out and listening to this video.